girls! Today I'm here to answer the question, how do I pin my hair in a bun so that it doesn't fall out? And I think for this one I'm going to need my professor glasses, which are dirty. Today we'll be demonstrating three different methods and then I'll talk through some general tips and tricks on really securing that hair into a bun so that it doesn't come out all night long. Alright girls, I'm going to be demonstrating on the side of my head because that is the easiest to demonstrate from and to film, so that is what I'm going to do. I'm also going to be using a ponytail as my base just because that way I can return to this more easily, but you don't have to start from a ponytail if you don't want to. I look like Deb from Napoleon Dynamite. I wish I could remember one of her lines. Before we begin, let's talk about the bun. First, you're going to take your hair that you're using for the bun and you're going to twist it. I like to twist away from my face and then wrap toward my face, although it really doesn't matter which way you do it as long as you're twisting and wrapping in opposite directions. When you twist, you want to twist really tight because the more compacted the hair is, the easier it will be for it to pin through and to really, really stay. Once you've twisted all the way down the hair, you're ready to wrap. As I said, I wrapped away from my face, so I'm going to wrap it toward my face. As I wrap, I'm going to place my hand against the base of the bun, and that way it ensures that the base of the bun is going to go flush against my head. Sometimes if you don't, it has a tendency to pull out like this. Putting your hand over it really helps to guide the bun into place. So twist it the rest of the way around, and then switch hands if you need to if your hair is that long. And again, hold it on top, and pull the bun into place. And then once you have it wrapped, it's time to pin. Method number one. In this method, you're going to pin at the base of the bun. Once you have your hair wrapped, you're going to take your pin and spread it apart. You want it spread apart so that you can get the most hair possible in the pin when you apply it to your hair. So you have it spread apart, then you're going to place it against the base of your bun, and as you put it into the bun, the hair is actually going to hold it apart so you can let go there and take your finger or your thumb and push down. You want to push either parallel to the head or slightly away or slightly toward. And then repeat that method on the top, bottom, and both sides, so north, south, east, and west of the bun. And the reason that you want to pin either parallel or only slightly away or toward the head is that if you pin too far away from the head, the pins are going to stick out the top of the bun. If you pin too far close to the head, you're going to scrape against your scalp and it will hurt a lot. Not really the most fun thing to do. Once you have your four pins and you may go back and pin over any sections that feel loose. Now for me, four pins is more than enough because I don't really have a lot of hair. But I do have flyaways. So what you can do if you have flyaways is to grab them, align them against the base of the bun, separate your bobby pin, pin over that section, and push in. And tips. I have occasionally seen people try to pin a bun without separating the two ends of the bobby pin so that it looks like this. The reason you don't want to do that is because it only incorporates as much hair as you see between these two. That's not really enough hair to really hold the bun. You really need to get more hair into the pin. So that's why you spread it apart. When you do that, you want to incorporate hair from the base right here and from the bun as well. That way you're really anchoring the bun into place. Tip number two. Occasionally, as you're pinning, you'll encounter resistance for whatever reason. Maybe your hair, the pin comes in contact with the hair scrunchie. Maybe it's just an extra tough bit of hair. If you encounter resistance, simply take the pin, pull it out a little ways, reposition, and pin again. That'll get you around the little obstacle and it'll help you to pin really securely. Tip number three. If you have really thick hair, sometimes bobby pins just aren't going to cut it because they're so small. What I recommend for girls with thick hair are hair pins. I use these a lot as a dancer. They're really great because they can incorporate a whole lot more hair and they hold it more sturdily than bobby pins do. And you can find these anywhere. Drugstores, Walmart, Kmart, whatever. They usually come with a little roll of thick ones and a little roll of thin ones. Throw the thin ones away. They're terrible. They're rubbish. Just, just don't even, just don't. I don't like them. But these thick ones, they can do really good for girls with thick hair. So that's my recommendation. Method number two. Now this might be just a little bit trickier than the other ones that I'm going to show you, but it really creates a better finished product in the long run. So if you're really trying to create that really pretty cinnamon ballerina type bun, this is the way to go. You basically got this little section right around here where you got the hair and it's wrapped around. What I recommend doing is to just take your bobby pin through and you're going to pin through and you're going to try to get hair just underneath the surface. So through here, just reach a little bit into it and grab some hair out. And I'm using a hairpin this time. You can use a hairpin or a bobby pin for this. And then you've got your bobby pin sticking out to the side because you grabbed the hair like this. So it's sticking to the side a little bit. You've got to maneuver it around so that the opening of it comes towards the base of the bun. And then the end is going to come away so that it's parallel to the head and then you just push it into the base of the bun. And that's that. And method number three. 
this is going to be the easiest of all of them. Now for this one, we're going to use this little thing called Goody Spin Pins, which people have been recommending in the comments to death. They've been asking me to try them, to review them, everything. So I'm going to do a little demonstration, and then I'm going to give you guys my thoughts. The basic premise is that once you've twisted and wrapped your bun, you're going to take the spin pin and rotate it in clockwise into your hair. So you just take it, put it at the base of the bun, and begin to rotate. And as you do that, you want to try to incorporate hair from the bun and the base, which is right here, as well. I find that I need to use both of the pins, and what you need to do when you put the second one in is to find out where the end of your hair is, where, the, where it finally finishes wrapping around the bun, and pin this right over that so that the end doesn't fall out. And then you might find it necessary to go back and pin flyaways because while these are good at just really quickly getting that hair secured into a bun, they're not good at securing flyaways. So if you have anything like this, you're probably still going to need to use bobby pins just to pin those little bits in. So what I think about goodie spin pins, they're great for just really quickly getting your hair up and out of the way. If you want them for school, you just don't want to have to think about what you're doing with your hair. You don't want to have to take around a couple bobby pins with you. You just want the two good size spin pins with you. That's helpful, it's great, but I don't necessarily love them, partially because you can't get all the flyaways in, so if you want a really neat looking bun, that's going to be really hard to do with just the spin pins. You're probably going to need to also use some bobby pins. Also, if you really want to hone your skills as a hairstylist, if you really want to be able to create a lot of different looks, you need to learn how to pin because sometimes you'll be using tiny sections of hair that you can't use a spin pin for because it would show through. And in those situations, you're going to need to know how to pin. And I feel like this could easily become a crutch if um, you just continue to use it and didn't teach yourself and didn't practice pinning and go through all the the toil of having your hair fall out of a bun and having to repin it and then learning through trial and error what works for your hair. I think that it's really important to know how to do that if you really, really want to have those skills. If those skills aren't too important to you, then these are great. As long as you're okay with having a slightly messy bun or using additional bobby pins to get a more clean looking bun, these are really fast. They definitely hold the bun well as long as you twist and wrap like I showed you earlier. Um, my only my only critique is that I think that they, they create a messy bun instead of like a really nice clean bun and I think that they can easily become a crutch instead of actually teaching yourself how to pin. For me, I think I would use them in a rush when I'm okay with having a kind of messy bun and I don't really want to take the time to really pin it. Maybe if my hair is wet and I'm running out the door or something like that, I uh, would do something like this. So that's my thoughts on it. Additional tips. I think most people know this rule, but I'm just going to go ahead and state it. Whenever you have a bobby pin and it's not really holding very well, you can always crisscross your bobby pins. And when you do that, they lock together. And when they lock together, they are stuck there. You could put this in and you could headbang. It would not go anywhere. So, basically all you do, you pin one in this way, you pin another one in this way, and it locks. You can do that on the outside of your bun. If you're doing like method number one or even number two, <laughs> either way you can pin it and you can take one and put it in this way and then take the other one pin it in the other way. They'll overlap, that will lock them in place, it will help your bun to stay even better. Again, you want to make sure that your bobby pin is spread apart when you apply it to the hair so that you can get as much hair as possible. When it's like this, you can get a good amount of hair like this not really so much. So definitely spread the pin apart before applying it to the hair. And also make sure that you're getting your hair from the base where you have this ponytail right here and the bun. If you're doing both of those, then you're attaching your hair to the side of the head and that way it's going to stay. If you only pin inside of the bun, then it's going to come away from the head. If you only pin right here against this and you don't get much of the bun, the bun is just going to fall out this way. You need to get a good amount. You want to get about the middle of the bun and back and then right along here and almost scraping along the scalp. If your hair is slippery, spritz it with just a little bit of hairspray and then twist. That will really help you to get a nice tight twist and your hair won't fall out of your fingers quite as easily. Finally, you must, must, must practice. I know this is going to take time, it's going to take energy, it's going to take a lot of trial and error. I basically told you the different techniques that you can use. Choose your technique, choose it wisely, and just go for it. Practice. and. If, you, if it falls out, if you're doing a bun and it falls out, figure out what went wrong, do it better the next time. It's constantly, constantly practicing more until you really get it. That's my biggest advice for you guys. Alright class, I hope this was helpful and until next time, I hope you have a fantastic day.